Now another important, equally important part of controlling and understanding how to barbecue is to be properly equipped so that you don't need to keep racing back and forwards to your kitchen and come back and find that something is burnt on the barbecue. So I like to bring out as much of the equipment that is possible to my barbecue rather than have it leave, left in the kitchen. One of the key components is a big cooler bag. This cooler bag is a 30 litre cooler bag and inside the cooler bag I have my ingredients that I prepared a couple of hours ago in plastic containers and I kept the ingredients cold with cooler blocks. That way I can have the food to hand and I haven't got to run backwards and forwards to the house. So we're going to zip this closed, keep it nice and cold until we need it. And I won't bring that food out until my barbecue is on and almost ready to go. And then we'll bring the ingredients out. Over here, we have a, a portable gas burner. So if I have a little sauce that I want to serve with my ribs or with my chicken breasts, I can make it hot and keep it warm and then serve it as and when I need it. And now we want to take a second to just talk about the equipment I use on a barbecue. Now sometimes you see tongs like this and sometimes you see much smaller tongs. Now I prefer, this is a matter of personal choice, I prefer the smaller tongs. And the reason I prefer the smaller tongs is I like control. Good tongue should be an extension of your hand. They shouldn't be really hard to squeeze close and sometimes they're overly long because people are worried about burning themselves. Maybe that's a little too short, but this is too long and too hard to squeeze and control. Now, sometimes I might also use a slice to turn over my burgers, but I never use a fork. I never stab the meat in the kitchen or on the barbecue with a fork. All you're doing is letting out the juices, letting out the flavour. So use tongs and use a slice or a spatula. It's also important to have plenty of paper towel and some anti-back cleaner to keep your area clean and perhaps even have um, a washing up bowl with some hot soapy water in close to hand so if you need to wipe anything up or clean your hands you have the ability to do that. Remember if you're touching raw meat and then touching vegetables before you touch the vegetables you need to clean your hands and sanitize your hands. And the same if you're using a cutting board. You need to have the ability to change your cutting board so you've got one cutting board for meat, one cutting board for no meat. Okay? And you also need to be thinking about that when you're doing your preparation earlier in the day. So the next thing I wanted to tell you about was how do you make your barbecue weatherproof? After all, trying to have a barbecue and plan a barbecue in the British summer is sometimes a, a, a throw of the dice. So what I like to do is I create a made up dish. It might be a chili, it may be a curry, and I'll do that the night before. And the reason I do this is twofold. One, if the heavens open up and it pours down with rain and I have to bring all my guests inside, I have some food to offer them. But also, you sometimes have, if you have enough guests, you have what I call a pause, where all the food that you had on the grill has been served and people are waiting for some more food to be cooked. If I have a chili or a curry that's already made and hot, I can offer that to my guests to keep the customers, keep the guests moving and not standing looking hungry at my barbecue grill for 20 minutes. 
I'd also want to take a moment just to tell you about what you're going to serve the food on. It doesn't have to be a disposable throwaway tin foil tray. We can make the food look a lot nicer with a little bit of thought. So on this table I've got a selection of interesting shapes and plates to put the food onto. So perhaps we could use this because we're going to do uh, a grilled warm Mediterranean salad. Or maybe we might use that bowl. And then we might use this large plate to put our burgers on and we can have different relishes and things on those different sections. We're also going to be doing a place dish so perhaps this might be a great dish to serve my fish on. So let's make your barbecue stunning. The next thing we're going to prepare is our hamburgers. So please when you have a barbecue don't buy ready-made burgers, make your own. They're cheaper, you'll know what's in them, and you can create some absolutely delicious burgers. So I'm going to show you some of the secrets of our, that I do as a chef to make great, great burgers. The minced beef I'm using is, has a 10% fat. You can buy leaner beef, but it won't give you enough fat when you're cooking it on the grill. In this cup, I have melted half a beef gnaw cube with three tablespoons of water. So I've melted that in the microwave and then I've, once it's completely melted I've put that in the freezer to cool it down because when I add that to my beef I want it to be cold. I don't want it to be hot or warm. That won't be good for the beef. I want it to be cold. So you need to chill that down and put it into the freezer, chill it down for five or six minutes before you think about putting it into your beef. In this cup I have 75 grams of diced onion. So I have 75 grams of diced onion to 750 grams of minced beef. So if you were using 500 grams of minced beef then you'd need to have 50 grams of diced onion. Now you can't make hamburgers without putting them on a really good burger bun. I like to use these brioche burger buns. They're a lovely size. They've got lots of flavouring because they've got egg in the recipe. And when I come to, before I serve my burgers on these buns, I put them, cut them open and put them on the grill just to, to brown them a little bit on the one side. It stops the burger bun from getting soggy and holds the burger really well together. Okay, so we're going to cut this open and mix our burgers. I'm going to show you a little trick here once we can get this wrapping off. Rather than dirty up a bowl, we're going to mix the burger meat right inside this tray. I'm just going to turn the beef over get rid of that paper because we don't want that mixed in with our burgers and I'm going to pour the onions in right into the tray and just gently mix that onions in to that beef. Just keep turning the beef over and get that onion distributed amongst the beef. Doesn't need lots and lots of mixing because if you over mix it, it'll make your burgers tough. Just want to turn it over and mix those onions in. Now we're not going to add any salt and pepper at this point, but we will salt and pepper the burgers before they go on the grill. Now we're just going to mix uh, cold beef bouillon into that mix to give it a really nice beefy flavor. Because modern minced beef doesn't really have any strong beefy flavor. And just a little secret trip tip like that will make a big difference to your burgers. So that's mixed enough. Now I don't put egg into my burgers. I don't put breadcrumbs into my burgers. We're just going to weigh this 
onto the scale. Now we started with 750 grams of minced beef, so I should get six burgers out of this 750 grams, which will be about 125 grams each. Of course, there'll be a slightly more because of the onions in there. So we're going to divide this mix into six equal portions. Let me see. 125. Put that onto my board. 125. It's a little more. Now it's good to take the time and trouble to weigh them, to get them roughly all the same size. Before you start, before you start shaping your burgers. And the last one. Okay, so we've got all our burgers approximately the same size. We'll put the scale tray to wash and now we're going to shape our burgers. So I just want to squash it down and then we're going to you show you another trick to get this done before you light your barbecue because then they won't fall apart on the grill. So I'm shaping it, flattening it, trying to keep from any split edges. Okay, I'll show you another one. Try to make sure that they're even thickness and if they start to split, bring them back together. Okay, so when we've got all six burgers done, we're going to take a plastic tray and we're going to use these. I've cut some little squares that are about four or five inches square made of parchment paper. And I'm going to put that into my plastic container and put my burger on top like that. And then I'm going to put another sheet on top of that and repeat so that when you come to put your burgers on the grill they're easy to separate and they're not going to stick together. And the re next recipe I'm going to show you could not be simpler. I call it sausages in beer. It's a recipe that's absolutely foolproof and you won't have to worry about are the sausages fully cooked by the time they're brown because these absolutely will be fully cooked by the time they are brown. So we start off with 12 pork sausages and I like to use this outdoor reared British pork sausages. I get these from Lidl and they're 95% pork. So it's a very high pork content and they also happen to be gluten free if you've got any guests that are concerned about gluten. So we've got our pork sausages in a disposable roasting tray and we're just going to slice half an onion. It doesn't have to be red, it can be white but I just happen to have a red one spare and we're going to sprinkle the onions on top of the sausages, spread those onions out a little bit and then we're taking a bottle of beer. This is 500 milliliters of beer. And we're just pouring the whole bottle onto the sausages and then we're moving the tray gently over to the grill. So I've transferred my roasting tray 
with my sausages in beer onto the grill. I've got it on the hottest side of the grill. So the idea is the beer will come to a simmer and cook my sausages. So I'll gently turn the sausages and when they are fully cooked then we will just brown the sausages, take them out of the beer and brown them on the grill and that way we're absolutely guaranteed that the sausages will be fully cooked. So as my beer starts to come to a simmer around my sausages I'm turning my sausages over to make sure they get cooked evenly. Now another great thing about my sausages in beer is it's a very quick thing to cook and you can use these if you wish as an hors d'oeuvre so when the sausages come off the grill and they're nice and brown cut them into three or four pieces put them on toothpicks and use them as an hors d'oeuvre while people are waiting for the rest of the barbecue to be finished. So while the sausage is cooking we're going to do a little bit of quick preparation for our place. Today we're using whole place. These weigh about 10 ounces, about 280 grams. And uh, one of the things you're looking for when you look for place is you want nice bright orange spots. This is the, the, the side that, that you see upwards when place swim at the bottom of the sea on the seabed and then the white skin is closer to the sand. So you're looking for nice bright orange spots that tell you that the fish is nice and healthy. So we've taken the heads off, the tails off, they've been gutted so they're ready to go. Now there's a natural line that runs down the place so we're just going to score with a sharp knife just a little bit And we'll do that the same for this one, which isn't it so easy to see with dark glasses on. It's just going to make it easier by doing that for the fish to come off the bone when they come off the grill. Now we're just going to drizzle some olive oil on both sides of the place. Now if you happen to be say in America and you don't have place in America but you can use flounder and use this exact same recipe. In my saucepan I have a little bit of sauce that I'm preparing to go on top of the grilled place. I have about 150 millilitres of creme fraiche I've got about two teaspoons of little capers. I've got grated zest of half a lemon, the juice of one and a half lemons, about a third of a teaspoon of chopped fresh sage, and about half a teaspoon of sugar just to take off some of the tartness. And we're just going to bring that up to a simmer and then turn it off. And we're just going to drizzle that over the grilled place when it comes off the, off the grill. So you can see now that the sausages are completely white so they've cooked, they've thoroughly already cooked in the beer and now we're just browning the sausages off on the grill. So I've put the sausages onto the grill but I'm going to tur keep turning them so they get nice and evenly brown, not burnt on one side. Don't throw away the beer because you might have some more sausages to cook later on or you might want to keep the sausages warm in the beer so don't throw that beer away just yet. So as the sausages continue to brown I'm continuing to turn them so they get nicely brown not too dark on one side and I'm also if you've noticed during my cooking today I haven't used any meat only vegetables down this far end. So if I had any pescatarians that only eat seafood, I can put my hand on heart and said there's been no meat on this end of the grill, only a tray with sausages in it. But not, the meat wasn't actually touching the grill. So now we're going to put our two whole place on the grill. And at the same time we're going to carry on turning our sausages 
Now I also put the place down at that end because that is the hottest end of the grill and I want the place to cook in the hottest area on the grill. Now they may stick a little bit because I haven't used this grill for a little while but we shall see. I'm trying to oil the place nicely to stop that happening. So, as some of the sausages are almost done and some of them are not quite brown enough, I can hold the sausages in the beer. The beer has been boiled so it's perfectly fine to hold the sausages in. In a minute I'm going to be turning the place over. These are 280 grams each, which is about 9 going on 10 ounces of place. Uh, so you need to cook them about 4 to 5 minutes each side. So we're going to turn that over. And I want to get it in the, it, the same place. It doesn't matter if the skin comes off during the cooking process. And at the same time, we're, we're keeping an eye on the sausages. So in a minute, we'll turn the other place, and they'll take another five, six minutes to cook. They don't need a huge amount of time. People tend to overcook seafood when they're cooking it on a barbecue. So all my sausages at this point are nicely browned, and we've got them back in the beer just to keep warm. Place has about another two to three minutes to cook and then we're going to transfer the place off onto the board, take the fillets off of the bones and put it back together on the plate and then we'll put a little bit of that sauce we made earlier onto the place. I've taken my place fillets off the bone, stacked them together and then I'm just pouring my Creme fraiche with capers, lemon and fresh sage out of the garden over the fish. Enjoy! I'm going to put my homemade gourmet burgers onto the grill. So we're going to put them in the, the medium hot section of, the, of our grill. And because I've got these separated with little squares of parchment paper, they don't stick together, so really, really easy to put these on. Remember these are 125 grams each, which is a nice portion, it's just about four ounces. I'm going to put my rashers of streaky bacon. I'm going to put one rasher on per burger. Now, I use streaky bacon because it's going to get nice and crisp, and I can break it up to put it on top of the burger nice and neatly. And just spread that where we can. There's five. And one more to make it six. Okay. Okay, so the burgers don't take very long to cook at all. People tend to overcook their burgers rather than undercook them. So I'm going to turn the burgers over. They're getting nicely browned. Let's move them away from the, the high heat. And we're going to, again, like we did the first time, put some salt and pepper on the burgers. We don't season the burgers before they go on the grill. So in my non-stick saucepan, I have some sliced domestic mushrooms, some salt and pepper, some olive oil, some butter, and two nice big fat cloves of garlic. I'm going to cook these to make garlic mushrooms as a topping for my gourmet burgers. And rather than waste the heat when my charcoal goes on, and I'm waiting for the charcoal to be ready before I put my burgers on, I thought I could use this heat to cook my mushrooms. So here's another little tip. It's about three quarters done. I'm now going to put the cheese on and I like to use a mature cheddar cheese. I don't like using those American type slices that have all those chemicals and preservatives in it. 
go with natural cheese and a mature cheddar won't crumble up as much as other types of cheese. For my burgers I like to use a brioche bun. It's got lots of flavour and I just like to put it onto the grill just on the one side just to lightly lightly toast it but it goes it gets cooked very quickly so you need to keep an eye on it. As you can see it just takes a minute literally a minute or two to toast the brioche buns you just want it lightly brown like that it'll just stop the burger from making the bun soggy so that's great. Have your homemade burger with the mushrooms underneath, a slice of bacon on top and the cheese and then just topped with the lid. Delicious gourmet burgers for your guests. We have our finished barbecue. We've got our sausages in beer, we've got our delicious warm grilled Mediterranean salad. We have our grilled place with our lemon, caper and sage sauce and we've got our homemade gourmet hamburgers on brioche rolls. Enjoy!